the sound test room. Hello and welcome to the sound test room. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching the Hack Attack show. A few days ago I published a Hack Attack episode where I was happily unboxing my new iPad Mini 2. This is my old iPad, it's an iPad Mini 1. iPad Mini 1, iPad Mini 2. But just to make it clear, an iPad Mini 1 is the first generation non-retina iPad Mini. And this is the second generation iPad Mini, the iPad Mini Retina. Apple just basically changed the names to iPad Mini 1, 2 and now there's also iPad Mini 3. In my unboxing video I explained the difference between iPad Mini 2 and 3 and there's not much difference. It's basically the fingerprint recognition included with the iPad Mini 3 and a color. There's also a little metallic ring around the home button on the iPad Mini 3. So those are the biggest differences between the iPad Mini 2 and iPad Mini 3. Between the iPad Mini 1 and the iPad Mini 2, there's a big difference. Let's go to the hardware, for instance. The iPad Mini 1 is using an A5 chip. Whereas the iPad Mini 2 is using an A7 chip with a 64-bit architecture. So it can actually run 64-bit programs, apps and plugins. The iPad Mini 1 cannot do that. In this video, I will be talking about RAM memory. And the RAM memory is something like this. Imagine this earplug box being the RAM memory. A box where you put things as you work. As long as you keep these things inside this box, you'll know where to find them. But as soon as you stop working, it gets emptied out. That's a RAM memory. It differs from hard drives and ROM memories, where the data still exists even if you power it off. The RAM memory flushes all of the memory as soon as you turn a device off. So why would you want a lot of RAM? As a musician, working with WAV files, you need RAM space. The more you have, the bigger the WAV files you can use. Imagine you have a track inside Aurea or Cubasis, where you're using a lot of WAV files, long WAV files. Let's say you're recording a drum track and you're using eight microphones to record eight tracks of drums one for the snare one for the bass one for the hi-hat and so on a multi-track recording and you're trying to fit everything inside one door door by the way is shortened down from digital audio work station it's basically what beatmaker 2 is cubase's aurea and other apps like it they include arrangers and sequences and tools to edit and cut midi and wave aurea doesn't have midi yet by the way, just so you know. So the more wave you have, the more RAM you need. On the iPad mini one, I was frustrated because I only had access to 250 megabytes of RAM. Some of it gets used up by apps and the operating system, iOS. Before we start, I'm just gonna explain what this app is. This app was recommended to me by Toz Bourne, a very loyal follower to the sound test room. So thank you so much, Toz Bourne, for telling me about these apps. I usually use an app on my old device called Memory. And what I used it for was cleaning the RAM because sometimes, you know, the RAM got, gets all clogged and it's full of data. Even though I turn off all of the apps and stuff, there's still data in there especially when I'm doing these videos when I'm editing these videos inside Pinnacle Studio stuff runs slow and then I have to go out of Pinnacle Studio and use memory to clean the RAM and after that Pinnacle Studio will run smoothly again that app is is removed from the App Store but I still want it because I use it and I need it I need it desperately for my my, my work because I work extensively with my my eye devices so Tosborn recommended this app and it's supposed to do the same thing but I just want to warn you if you download this to an iOS 7 device my iPad mini 1 is still running iOS 7.1.2 and I doctor device doesn't seem to run smoothly with iOS 7 as soon as I've cleaned the RAM let's refresh that as soon as I clean the RAM the app basically just shuts down, it crashes. But if you start it up again, then you can see the result from that cleaning. As you can see, it just crashed. That doesn't happen on the iPad mini 2. 
if I refresh this one, then the app won't crash. So it's compatible with iOS 8. And my iPad mini 2 is running iOS 8.3. So let's start up iDoctor device. I've just cleaned these devices. And uh, basically, what we can see here, what we're left with. Now, these are two different machines. And they got different hardware. So let me go through that. The iPad mini 1 has 512 megabytes of RAM. And the iPad mini 2 has 1024 megabytes of RAM. That's one gig of RAM. Now, iOS 8.3 pulls more resources to run than iOS 7. And you can clearly see that. Sure, they have two different processes. So they work uh, differently. But I was actually expecting that I would have like 500 megabytes left of memory on this device. Half of the memory. But as you can see, that's not the case. So basically, I have about... 100 megabytes more than I used to have on this one. Back to why I need that, I was talking about waveforms. More RAM is good when you're using multiple and long waveforms. So having a clean memory and making sure that other stuff that shouldn't be running in the background aren't running is the best way for an iOS musician to work. So what I've done is I've put both of these iPads in flight mode. I've also gone into the settings and I've turned off the parallaxing effects uh, with the moving effects. When you actually tilt your iPad, it looks like the icons are floating on the background and stuff. That function doesn't need to be there for you to make great music. Turn it off. Turn off the Wi-Fi. If you have a iPad that is not only Wi-Fi but also cellular, then turn that off. You can do that in the settings. There are loads of stuff you can turn off to free up both memory and processing power. And you need that when you want to make great music and put a lot of stuff in there. If I was running iOS 7 on my iPad mini 2, I suspect that I would have even more memory. But iOS 8 has more functionality, it's got more stuff in it running, so it needs that extra bit of memory. So I'm actually left with less memory than I thought I would have. So I'm still gonna have to use shorter waveforms. I'm one of those people that don't like to put up MIDI channels, full MIDI channels, different apps and stuff, and just do MIDI and then play it out. Because every time you start up and set play, if you have a synthesizer that uses quirky oscillators, over time a synth sound can really change. It can really change in phase, in sound, in lots of ways. And I don't like that. So for control, I need to bounce a lot, I need to record a lot, and that means a lot, a lot, a lot of waveforms. So the more RAM, the better it is for me. I'm sorry if you feel like I'm all over the place with my information. I've re-recorded this video for so many times now because I, I actually, when I listen back to it and watch it, I actually think that I'm talking gibberish. So as a musician that works a lot with Wave, get iPads with more RAM. Uh, I'm hoping that iOS 9 will change things, uh, but I'm suspecting that iOS 9 is actually gonna grab even more resources. More resources. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney, and me, Jakob Hack, at thesoundtestroom.com wishes you a very productive week. Well, I'll be spending the rest of this evening cutting down this 20 minute long. Oh, 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 I've been talking for too long. I might have to record this again. <laughs>